Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Road Reflections. We got two big topics for you guys today. I'm gonna dig into in a in just a just a, just a few minutes. I uh, wanted to do a few little announcements up at the top of the show. Uh, like I said we, uh, in yesterday's video, if you got a chance to listen to yesterday's video, then this is going to be repetitive. If you did not get a chance to listen to yesterday's video, then this is going to be kind of new. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I mentioned that I was, uh, I was getting a little burned out. That is, uh, that is definitely true. It's, uh, and I, and I, I, get, I get weird when I get burnt out. Maybe I'll talk about that um, here as well. I forgot to bring out my notebook. That's why I'm struggling over here. But um, I was getting a little burned out with the show, uh, with the virtual shows that I'm doing. So I'm going to be taking a hiatus from that. Uh, there might be a consideration in taking a hiatus from Taboo Table Talk as well. Um, at the end of the month, I might I might end up taking a little bit of time off from... Uh, from all these things, uh, it's not going to be permanent. It is going to be a short little while. That's uh, that's that's probably about as much as I can take uh, in terms of a break uh, from doing from doing those things. Uh, but I have a bunch of episodes. You know, like I, I record all the Citizen Revolution shows, um, and then I release them as episodes of Forkful of Noodles. You guys might know that if you pay if you if you're an avid. Uh, viewer of uh, of the channel here, and so so yeah, so I'm doing that. I've got about uh, eight weeks worth of uh, stuff in the uh, in in the log after November, so I'll have everything set to go till till about January or so. Um, and I might come back in December. I might come back with a new format with a new uh, with a new release schedule that's that's a little bit better. Um, with all of the undertakings that, that I have. So basically, right now, I've got a side gig, which is, which is what, you know, I do these videos driving to, is, is going to the side gig, or, or randomly driving, but these mostly are, are while I'm driving to the side gig. So that's, that's a couple hours in the evening, and then I'm, 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 I might be getting an, an additional design side gig as well. So essentially, to supplement the income that I've uh, that I've lost from touring, I'm slowly regaining back by taking up all these things. Now, what does that mean? Uh, that means that this is a, that's a time commitment, and doing the Citizen Revolution shows is is a is a large time commitment. Um, you know, you're you're looking at eight to fifteen hours of research on a particular topic. Uh, another eight hours. You know, I usually spend one full day uh, on the script on the first draft, and then I go in and I edit everything and then you know another another day or so um building the presentation getting all the graphics and the and the video clips together so uh large undertaking it it becomes essentially the the main focus of my week and with all of these other things that I'm doing to supplement my income um it, it 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 just started becoming a lot and uh you know maintaining all of all of this work stuff with the with the uh, a personal life and trying to just have some downtime to relax was starting to become uh, rather difficult. It, it it eventually got to that like it is getting to that point where uh, you know do I do I take a couple hours off or do I just work till I'm going to bed again? And that's not particularly how I want to um, spend my days. Uh, you know, I, I have bills that I need to cover and I want to make the content that I want to make. Um, and so, you know, a lot of things are being juggled by one individual and it became a lot. So I think I need to take a little bit of a break to reevaluate some things and to get a little bit of distance, uh, and fresh perspective on the show itself. So, um, there might be, you know, a bunch of ranty videos, a bunch of live streams coming at you, at you guys for, for November. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, this is, this is sort of a, I'm, I'm kind of thinking over some stuff and, uh, so, you know, and usually when I get burnt out like this, my anxiety gets on high. I get very anxious. I, I, I start feeling like people don't like me. I, I, I get the uh, distant from people. Like I feel like I'm more distant from people than, than I actually am. Um, you know, I, I, I get a little depressed, uh, but you know, 
and that's partly because I'm not creating stuff the way that I would be uh, creating stuff. I'm not learning stuff the way that I would be normally learning stuff. Um, doing the things that I find, uh, you know, to be fulfilling, to be to to bring me joy, bring me happiness, um, in in my career wise. So sometimes I get a, a little extra anxious. So, so that's sort of the place that I'm at, which is part of the reason why I'm like I should probably fucking take the time off uh, and gotta get my get myself uh, to a good good spot. So this Friday I do have a Citizen Revolution show. It is going to be a Halloween special. I'm probably going to tell two to three scary-esque stories. Uh, let's put it that way, I guess. Uh, so grab your tickets for that. It's uh, it's five dollars for the for the for the tickets. And and if you've come to one of these shows before, you'll you'll probably get an email from me um, within the week or so, uh, talking about free tickets, how you can get free tickets to this thing as well. So. Uh, and if and if you haven't come to see one of these things, you know, if you if you watch the videos and you want to be a part of the virtual audience, um, yeah, that the the best way to do it is is grab a ticket. Uh, go go to go to my website krishmohanhaha.com and uh, and grab a ticket from there. Um, I'm gonna be doing like I said. I'm gonna be it's it's a little bit different than than normal. I'm gonna be doing some of these scary stories like. They're kind of basically like these stories from the road. It'll be a little bit looser and um, a little bit more relaxed. I, I did I did a version of stories from the road uh, for Pittsburgh Fringe uh, back in May, and I had a lot of fun with it. And I wanted to do something else with it, uh, but I just I don't you know I did I didn't know what. So I have a couple of those stories, and uh, that might be something that I'll add, uh, I might add to these live virtual shows as well um that way you know it'll kind of decrease the workload on my end i'll be able to just kind of relax a little bit more um and and not get burned out as much that's that's sort of the goal uh i i've been getting burned out a lot more and usually you know i can take a day or two off but this one feels like it's it's a lot more uh than just like a let's take a day or two off um, plus, like I mentioned yesterday, you know, we, we did lose the River's Edge studio uh, due to the due to COVID and stuff. So um, that that uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like listen to the universe kind of a kind of a thing. Uh, so I'm kind of just you know let, let's let's take the time off to shape up the space that I'm in and and create a studio space for myself. Um, and take a little time off from the show, get, get a little distance, get a little perspective. So that's kind of what I'm doing with that said, with that in mind, with that in mind, let's get into this week's road reflection. Uh, two big stories for you guys today. Two big stories. Uh, first, I, I haven't seen a lot of people cover this. They might've covered this and, you know, kind of wedge this information in. Uh, but I, I kind of wanted to talk about it. So the the United States Postal Service uh, wanted to send masks to every single American family at the beginning of the pandemic. That was a uh, the, a plan that the former uh, Postmaster General had in mind. She had this in mind, and she wanted to send out masks to uh, American families. How many masks? Six hundred and fifty million masks is how much she wanted to send. And the Trump administration rejected this plan. And I want to point out that there were no Democrats backing up this plan either. Uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer, uh, any any of these, Dianne Feinstein, Kamala Harris, none of these other Democrats came out and fought back against the administration. They, they kind of just rolled over and they were like, well, I guess we can't do it. And they just let it go, right? Um, didn't hear a peep about it. Now, I talked about the importance of the Postal Service in a video. Uh, I, I really I did a whole show. That was one of the Citizen Revolutions that I did. And you can check out the, uh, that one on the channel. There's a lot that I cover in it. Um, you know, I cover how, how essentially the Postal Service is the reason why we have a lot of the modern conveniences, such as um, uh, highways. Like, they, they essentially made the first highways. 
you know, journalism uh, got around. It, you know, people were getting news because of the Postal Service. A uh, lot, of, lot of importance to the Postal Service. Primarily, it was important to the people, to, to average American citizens. That's who got a lot of value from the Postal Service. So, um, you know, it was important for the elites to control the Postal Service. We also had the Postal Bank, which would have been a public bank that would have protected people's money from economic crashes caused by the Federal Reserve, caused by the people that wanted the Federal Reserve, um, that manufactured these crashes and, and profited off of them. I've talked about that. Uh, in in the Postal Service video as well. We talked about the Great Postal Strike. We talked about the 2006 piece of legislation um, that screwed over the Postal Service. Um, Talked about that as well. Uh, You know, all of these things are why the Postal Service has come under attack. That's why Louis DeJoy, who was put into place by Trump, was kind of like the final step to all of this in, in to defund and privatize uh, the postal service, so that it wouldn't be a value for the people. It, it would it would mean that you know the the cost of postage, the cost of sending sending mail to each other, to so keeping in communication, getting medication, for, uh, uh, getting food delivered, getting all these things would be would start costing a little bit more, and private industries would be able to capitalize on that. Uh, so sending masks, free masks, was not something that uh, uh, the the administration or or anyone within the the establishment wanted to do, uh, which is why you know you never heard Democrats stand up for it. Um, the the postal service has been a service specifically meant to help the people, and giving 650 million masks to the American populace would have been exactly that. It would have been the postal service helping the people in need, and it would have uh, it would have created a lot of jobs, right? Because uh, they were going to create cotton masks. They weren't going to do the surgical masks. They weren't going to do the PPE style masks. They were going to do a dual layered cotton mask. Um, that means that somebody would have to make these masks, which means that you could have very quickly been like, hey, we need help with creating these masks. We need help with creating 650 million masks. Uh, and that creates jobs for a certain period of time. And let's say this program goes over really, really well. Great. Let's create another batch of masks to send people because you know having just one mask is man, not, maybe not 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 particularly awesome. I I had one, only one mask for a while and you know I had to clean it and when I didn't have it I I just you know that was like a day that I'm I'm not gonna go out you know I would I would clean it overnight and then I would hang it up to dry and it would take a little while uh, to dry so so now I have a couple different masks and and it and it helps. Uh, because you know I can clean a couple of them at a time, uh, one or one or two of them at a time, and, and still have one that I can wear uh, while the others are drying. And so you know the postal service could have done the same thing. It, w- it could have been a successful program. It could have really, really controlled the spread of this disease. Um, and sure, there are a couple doctors that came out and said, well, you know, sending people masks um, doesn't mean that they would wear them, and and that's true. That's true, but I think a lot more people uh, would have worn them when it is coming from a government entity. When, uh, you know, a person or a institution of note, so to speak, is telling you that this is an important thing, uh, it would have added a little bit more gravity to the situation at hand, um, and it might have kept some conspiracy theories at bay. Possibly. I don't know. But I do think that it would have helped. Uh, but the Trump administration basically said no, because they um, they didn't they they did the thing that Trump said in that in the Bob Woodward interview, right? He was like, "Well, I didn't want to cre- create a panic, so I underplayed the the pandemic, and I'm going to continue underplaying the pandemic. That's going to be a thing that I do. I'm going to always under I'm going to keep underplaying it uh, because I don't want to create past panic." Well, sure. Okay, but you did create a uh, an, an e- mass economic crisis, crisis, a mass eviction crisis, a mass small business crisis, where people are losing their jobs. They are uh, going to be losing their homes. They're going to be small businesses are all shutting down, you know, uh, because of this debt that is created by capitalism. Because people can't afford to be where they are, 
you know, so, so, you know, you might, so you created all of these other crises, but hey, at least people aren't panicking. Well, clearly you've never experienced losing a job or losing a home or losing your entire business because you've had bankruptcies, but then you just fucking built a new casino because you had the money to fucking do that through your bankruptcy. Sure, everybody's is struggling to put food on their table, is worried about how they're going to keep up with their bills. These banks make you may put put you in a financial trap day in and day out. They're not really helping anybody. But hey, at least no one's panicking. At least no one is panicked, you guys. Everyone is super chill as they lose their homes and can't feed their families and lose everything that they've worked for in the last 20 years. Super fucking chill about it. This could have easily prevented a lot of shit. Now, on top of this, too, uh, you do have um, postal workers, the United States Postal Service leaders... Um, that are preventing specific um, Congress people from coming in to do inspections of the Postal Service. Uh, and they're claiming that, you know, you can't do something like that one month close to the election. Um, and mail-in ballots are, are kind of a big deal. And again, the mail-in ballot situation is also not a perfect situation. Is it better uh, than the, you know, um, corrupt, broken election system that we have? Possibly. Uh, I think uh, I read something where I think it's like 20% of mail-in ballots go missing. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear, but some, some dude on a bike is just jamming out in the in the tunnel right now. Uh, and it's just like echoing everywhere. Uh, but um, I don't know if the microphone is picking that up or not. But, you know, uh, uh, voter fraud uh, or election fraud by, by mail-in votes, I think it's like 20%. Which is still pretty, pretty high. Um, and, and there, there have been a lot of issues, but it's not been the postal services issues. They have been getting the applications out. They have been getting the ballots out to people. It's all from the election side, right? Like the people that are supposed to like send you information about the mail-in ballots and like the instructions and like how to do it and all that kind of stuff. They're the ones screwing up. Pennsylvania people were receiving like the directions were only printed on half of the page or something uh, the Green Party is not allowed to be in Pennsylvania uh, uh, well I, rather they are they are allowed but not in the presidential category so the president the VP uh, not allowed uh, so and that was you know the Democrats went in and and they did that on purpose because why? Because Pennsylvania was was a, 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 an important state, and they lost Pennsylvania in the last election. And they're this doing this only perpetuates that continuing narrative that oh well the Green Party is a spoiler. All third parties are spoilers to either the Republicans or the Democrats, and that's all always how it should be. It should either only be one of the other two parties. There he is, man. He's fucking rocking out. He's jamming it. Now, what the Postal Service is doing by not letting these Congress people come in and inspect their space, uh, and, and the only reason why they're doing it now is because of the mail-in ballots, because, uh, you know, everything is being run, a lot, or rather, a lot is being run through the mail. Uh, that's the only reason why they're coming in to, like, check the Postal Service and all that kind of stuff, right? So they're protected by the Hatch Act, which basically, like, ensures that everything stays nonpartisan, especially when it comes to close to election time and no uh, partisan, there's no partisan like uh, interference in, in nonpartisan businesses or services like the United States Postal Service. Because here's the thing, the, the, the mail should not be political. Um, there was a story, you know, in, in local news that we saw that there was a guy in one of our counties one of the surrounding counties, maybe Westmoreland County or something along those lines, that uh, this guy essentially threw away mail. 
and you know a bunch of the postal work like a bunch of former postal workers were like that's a shame to see it really sucks but you know this is a rarity so let's not make it sound like this is exactly what's happening because once it gets on the local news once the the way the local news ends up framing this stuff is you know oh my god the postal service is throwing out your mail holy shit how many ballots are in that mail you know and so on and so forth and there was like one ballot in that in in the in the thing that this guy threw away and he might have been a disgruntled postal worker he might have not liked uh, where he was, he might have lost an opportunity for a raise. We they, we don't know because they didn't do the investigation to find out the reasons behind that action. Uh, so again, it becomes like is is it the postal service's fault? No, it's an individual acting on themselves. Uh, so, the, but the local media does make it sound like holy shit, the ma- the the postal service is getting rid of the mail. Look out, get your secure your ballots. Secure your make put a put a, a, a tracking device. Make sure you know where your ballot's at. Put it get a drone out there. Make a drone follow your mail to make sure it's getting delivered to the right place. It just ends up again kind of pushing that narrative of like, oh well, we need to privatize the postal service. No, we don't. Anytime we privatize anything that should be for the for the good of the people, when you privatize it, it it, it eventually it, it in 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 uh, inexplicably becomes fucking awful. But you know it shouldn't be a political issue. Getting the mail delivered to you or or getting things through the mail should not be a political issue. Now political things do get sent through the mail, um, but all political things get sent through the mails whether they're republican or democrat or green party or whatever they all get sent through the mail right um that's kind of what makes it an apolitical organization they are going to deliver the things that you need delivered at the in a, in a timely fashion that's what the postal service is, is supposed to be there for um and and, of, and you know again i i address this in in, in the video i made is is you had that 2006 bill where they had to pre-fund people's retirement, including people that they haven't even hired yet, which put them in debt, like a crazy amount of debt. And they're the only uh, government service uh, that is in this much debt. And so if you're wondering, like, why can't they do all the things they, they, they should be able to do? It's because they don't have the ability to because they have been uh, shackled by the uh, 2006 PAEA law, which was written by uh, two Democrats and two Republicans. And uh, there were only 20 congressmen that uh, went against it, that said this was, uh, uh, you know, we shouldn't do that. And, and, and a bulk of them were, you know, Republicans. Uh, so again, this whole like bipartisan notion, or rather this partisan notion uh, that only the Republicans want the postals is bunk, it's bullshit. Um, Plenty of Democrats have gone after to privatize the Postal Service as well as Republicans have, it, you know, so. Um, but really, g- delivering and, and getting your mail should not be a political argument. But here we are. This is that's what that's what happened this year uh, with with the, with the way Trump treated the Postal Service, with the uh, uh, with, with with putting someone like Louis DeJoy um, as Postmaster General you know, a, a Republican uh, funder, you know, it, um, it, it it's difficult to say that it's not a political action. Uh, you know, the administration has politicized it. And then, and then it became like that was a rallying cry of like, oh, you can't vote for Trump because he'll come after the, po- the, the post office is the reason why you need to vote Democrat. And I would say, yeah, okay, that is a reason you should vote Democrat. Only if the Democrats were coming out, only if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were coming out and saying, yeah, we're going to we're going to, um, you know, reverse the PA, the 2006 PAEA law. And, you know, not have the post office pre-fund uh, all that. And they're not going to. They're not going to. If, if 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 there's enough money in it, if there's enough support or anything in it. Uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris would would defund and privatize the postal services in, in the same capacity that Trump would. So, uh, 
going on to our second story, uh, I'm sure some of you guys might have seen it. it it's it's kind of a, a a little bit of a buzz, and I watched it tw- uh, twice today because I kind of wanted to get a few things. So hopefully, I won't miss the things that I wanted to talk about with this video. Uh, that is the Nancy Pelosi freaks out on Wolf Blitzer video. Um, so. <sighs> The whole video in and of itself is, like, she does not have much of a retort. She, I mean, she doesn't have that many defenses to not approving a $1.8 trillion stimulus that have been proposed by the Republicans. Now, her argument is, you know, and, and I'll, I'll kind of go through a bunch of stuff in the video, but, you know, her argument is how is that being spent? There's no child care and things of that sort. Well, isn't isn't your job as the Speaker of the House to fight for those things? And why aren't you fighting for those things? And why haven't you been fighting for those things? Um, The problem within this thing is Wolf Blitzer is coming out and saying, like, hey, people are hurting. There's a lot of people that have lost their jobs. There's a lot of people that are about to lose their homes, and they're panicked, and they're worried, and they've been waiting. They've been waiting all summer long. and the uh, Since June, June was when the HEROES Act was proposed uh, by the Democrats in the House. And since then, you know, there's only been a lot of this uh, posturing and back and forth and uh, all of this bullshit between the two parties. And now people are tired and, you know, you have this $1.8 trillion um, stimulus plan that has been proposed. Uh, And yeah, it's not everything, but it's enough that it'll get some people like the money that they need and they've been waiting for. And she realistically, I mean, she doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of defenses to this. Right, because. Because the thing that she says is uh, the, the president wants to write a check with his name on it. Now, she mentions this about three times. And she's mentioned this before. Wolf Blitzer's show is not the first time that she's mentioning this. She did a podcast where she mentioned it. And the, uh, the, you know, the podcast host was like, hey, are you, are, you, are you literally like holding the stimulus bill back because this dude wants to write a check with his name on it? And, and at the end of the day, it would mean that he would get credit for it, just like with the other, other stimulus checks. Like, if somebody wanted a check, um, you know, they would get a check with his signature on it, and, and that's, like, that's what's holding you back, is that you want the credit. And she goes, no, I, I, don't, I don't care about that, and Trump's not important. And it's like, well, if he's not important, then fucking approve the bill. Approve this and then fight for the stuff that you want. Which is stuff that you should have been fighting for in the first place, right? So, but instead of making these sort of arguments, right, of like, hey, we did try to fight for this stuff, but uh, the Republicans blocked it and so on and so forth, she starts throwing out, like, buzzwords, uh, like our healthcare heroes, she throws that out there, right? The healthcare heroes, we need uh, more more PPEs for them and and. Uh, which is, yeah, okay, yeah, you, but that should have, again, been there from the start. And if you did care about the PPEs, maybe you would have approved the fucking uh, USPS plan, the Postal Service plan to, to get uh, 650 million masks out there to people and done a budget for the PPEs, you know. You wouldn't have wasted your time posturing and doing performative politics you would have actually been on the floor fighting for the stuff that we need to be fought, that need to be fought for. She talks about essential workers. Oh, these essential workers are so important. They're so important. Yet you're not doing anything for the essential workers. There are essential workers that went on strike. Amazon is treating their fucking workers horribly. It's it's Prime Day, and Amazon is treating their workers horribly. Uh, there, there's hundreds and thousands of people that, that have worked in Amazon that have tested positive for COVID-19. There's a bunch of people that have died. Uh, COVID aside, a bunch of people have died in Amazon warehouses. Where are you on fighting somebody like Jeff Bezos? You know who is fighting Jeff Bezos? A socialist in, the, in city council in Seattle. And then she throws in coronavirus. 
That's how, that's, that's how she says it because Wolf is like, no, no, I get it. They're like, yes, doctors are important. There's a lot of essential workers out there, but you, they, they all need this money. They all have been waiting for this money for a very long time and have been struggling. And now it's coming to a, a very large tipping point. Uh, you know, winter's coming and a lot of people are going to be homeless and that's not good because, uh, he didn't say this, but there is a lot of spread within the homeless community itself. Um, because you know they're they're in close quarters they're uh not able to keep um keep up their hygiene they're not able to get masks all the time they get sick a lot easier so she's willing to like expand the homeless population because they're not getting everything that they wanted in this bill well, here's the thing with that. Uh, progressives have been wanting stuff from this stimulus bill that, that you've been proposing through the House for, for quite some time, and we haven't gotten shit, but we're like, all right, people need something. Like, like I said this before, like the, 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 the $1,200 that was sent back in, what, April? And, and some people just got it in, like, August, Right. That that 1200 bucks that took you guys forever to fucking get to everybody that needed the money. The $600 um, additional of unemployment uh, that, again, same deal, like took a long time to get through for a lot of people. Um, you know, that, that was pittance. It was barely anything. But it still was something that people needed uh, and they needed help from. So it was important that they got it. It was pittance, but it was still helpful. That should tell you the state of our economy. That should tell you the state of the capitalist system. Is that when people receive pittance, they're like, holy shit, this helps out so much. Imagine imagine how much better our lives would be if we were all getting the basic needs that we were getting. If we were all getting a universal basic income to cover those needs. But, hey, progressives were like, all right, let's just get the people some money. And then we'll keep fighting for this, for UBI and a Medicare for all. Which, by the way, she has declined. The HEROES Act that she put out in, in June that she brings up, the CARES Act, the HEROES Act, this stuff, she brings up in this interview. Um, well, I mean, they were, they were all corporate handouts. She wasn't going to put any uh, Medicare for All options in there. Uh, she was going to expand COBRA, which is just, I mean, What? Pramila Jayapal went in and, and tried, like, she's the only progressive that was trying to fight for a UBI. And she was like, no, we're not going to do that. She couldn't even say universal basic income. So she says all these buzzwords. She brings up the CARES Act, which was just a corporate handout anyway. And... You know, she doesn't really have a response for when he goes, well, why aren't you approving this $1.8 trillion stimulus that would help the American people? Yes, it doesn't have any sort of child care. And, and what she even brought up was like child care tax uh, or something like that. Or, or tax credit, sorry. A child care tax credit. Which, wh- like, wh- what is that? That's not getting help for child care. It's not being like, all right, we're going to give American families an additional $600 a month so that, you know, they can still go to work and have somebody at the house to watch their kids and, and like, help pay them and stuff. No, it's like, we're going to give you a tax credit. What the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about?
So she she doesn't have any answers, and she can't like back up any of the valid. I mean, she tries to make valid points, but they're all invalid points. And if you want the childcare stuff in there, fucking fight for it. Why are you not fighting for it? She go, and then she goes. You know, Wolf Blitzer is like, well, it's not everything, but there's a lot in there. I haven't had the opportunity to check out what's actually in this stimulus bill, right? But the point being is, like, look, if if it's, it, it really does seem like you're pissed off that Donald Trump wants to fucking put his name on the check. Part of it is because, yeah, uh, you know, you're you're scared that you're gonna fucking lose again because if a bunch of people so close to the election get a bunch of checks with his name on it, they're going to fucking vote for him. But you guys can't get anything approved, right? So if you get this... This is something that Wolf Blitzer brought up, too. And I was just like, yeah, this is kind of the the play that I think would make a little bit more sense, which is you approve the $1.8 trillion, get it through the House. Like, Ro Khanna wants it through the House. Andrew Yang said that it should be gone through the House. And then he put it on Mitch McConnell's plate. And if Mitch McConnell says no, then guess what? He is ousting himself from his own job. Which is good, because we need that motherfucker gone. We need Nancy Pelosi gone, too, by the way. We need all these fucking old heads. That's what she brings up. So then, so, she keeps calling Wolf Blitzer an apologist. This part gets a little weird, where she accidentally says Obama instead of uh, Trump. And then she goes, oh, thank God for Obama. Oh, thank... Oh, Obama, thank... Oh, Obama, thank God. Going back to that fucking liberal Democrat worship of Barack Obama, which is so gross. It was just a really weird moment. Then she brings up, like, Wolf, you don't understand. You don't get it. These people have chosen us. They've elected us to represent them, so we get their plight. We get what they're going through. We get what 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 uh, you know uh, what their needs are. And it's like, do you though? Fucking do you? You're a hundred millionaire with two refrigerators full of ice cream. You haven't had to struggle a fucking day in your life for thirty years of you being in office. You haven't put forward fucking anything. You've bailed out more corporations than people. And now you're saying that, oh, yeah, people, people, we, we know what pe- how people are. Do you? Because here's what people need. People need health care. They need a basic income so that they can pay all their bills, keep their homes, and put food on their family's table. They need money for their small businesses. The same level of bailouts that you guys gave to the fucking banks is what they need for the people. And you've refused all of those things. So how are you fucking... And I'm not saying that Wolf Blitzer knows what the American people need, but at least he's admitting, like, yeah, I might not need these things, but the American people do, and you are in a position where you can make that shit happen, uh, and you have Democrats within your own caucus, within your own committees, within your own party telling you that that's what needs to fucking happen, and you're sitting there and, and... like shitting on them for it and and again she keeps bringing up the fact that Donald Trump is going to put his name on the checks who fucking cares even if it's pittance there's a lot of Americans that could use that stimulus right now could get them out of some debt that could get them ahead on a couple payments of certain things that they need to survive you and your mansions made out of ice cream don't have to worry about that shit. You out of touch hundred millionaire bitch. And then, you know, she's like, Rokan is wonderful. And 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 Andrew Gang is wonderful. But you know, this this is they just don't get it. They didn't write the bills. So they don't get it. They don't get what's in there. By the way, I don't... Like, she's also struggling to, like, talk. <laughs> Either out of just sheer rage that people aren't just, like, yas queening her all the time. And, like, bending the knee and being like, Oh, yes! Master Pelosi, please 
tell us how to think and what to think. We turn our lives over to you, Master Pelosi. It's again, this is this again is like it's the mask that's slipping off of these fucking nicey nice Democrats because they're not nicey nice Democrats. They are rich people that want to control your lives and they don't give a fuck about what happens to you. If Nancy Pelosi gave a shit about what was happening to you, she would have pushed for a UBI, a Medicare for all. She would have pushed for, for the American people to be taken care of instead of giving out more corporate handouts and access to health care. She brings up this notion of like, uh, do you do you not care how the money is spent, right? Do you not care how the money is spent, because the Republicans think, oh, it's going to give a, a lot of tax breaks to the wealthy, and it's like you do that. You also give tax breaks to the wealthy. If you didn't give tax breaks to the wealthy, you don't have a position in Congress. You would be a pariah. Not that Bernie Sanders is the biggest pariah, but you would have been a pariah like him. Then she starts justifying, right? She's like, oh, we've been going back and forth with the Republicans, you know, because the Republicans, you know, we knew that the Republicans would say no to certain things. You know, that's what's, that's the excuse that she used. When she denied Medicare for all, when she pushed back against Pamela Jayapal and UBI, she said, oh, well, the Republicans might get mean about it. Well, notice how the Republicans aren't like, well, we better like give this child care thing because Nancy Pelosi might yell at us and tell us that we don't know what we're talking about. Because the Republicans don't care. It's the same excuse. Like, like they, they did that excuse for Obama where they were like, oh, well, Obama, you know, had a, uh, had a lot of Republican opposition uh, in the House and, the, and, 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 and in the Senate, so he wasn't able to get a lot of these things done, but what he did get done was monumental, was incredible, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, but, they, but they don't get, I mean, Trump gets a bunch of shit done with a bunch of opposition from the Democrats. No excuses there. So it's just like the same thing. It's just like, yeah, fucking, geez, they're going to be mean about it. That's what they do. They don't give a shit about people and they're fucking mean. That's going to stop you from fighting for it? How is the money going to be spent in your thing? Tax credits? How about you give the American people the money that they need to survive during a fucking pandemic? How about you give them the things that they need? How about you fund the post office so that they can send 650 million masks to the American people? How about you give them health care? How about you talk to these banks to to lift, uh, you know, all of the interest rates to put a moratorium on rents and evictions, on debt? She goes on the attack of Rokana and she was basically like, oh, well, Rokana doesn't know the plight of the American people. Like you do? So then she makes all these justifications about, you know, like going back to the point, sorry. I got, in, I got into a, a rant and I forgot about what I was saying. Well, uh, she makes the justification that like, um, you know, they had to adjust the budget so many times and they came down $1.6 trillion. They actually brought the, the budget down $1.6 trillion. And, you know, they did all these things with the Republicans. And they uh, were giving into the Republicans so much uh, that they brought the budget down by $1.6 trillion. And we're like, what did you get in return? Nothing? So you didn't fight for anything. You just brought the budget down. So the so, so so you bent the knee to the Republicans, and now you want your your constituents and your party members and your media fucking pundits to just go along with it. 
to be like, yes, you did the right thing. Yas, queen. You yas queened it. And now that they're not, where they're just like, hey, you fucked up. Like, the Republicans ain't going to give you shit right now because you kept bending the knee. It's like a spoiled child, right? Like, if you let a child eat ice cream every day before dinner and not finish their dinner, then they're always just going to expect that. And then when they don't, they're going to throw a tantrum. That's what Nancy Pelosi did with the Republican Party. And she expects everyone to, like, throw praise at her for it. And now she's posturing. She's desperate to get that election. And the mask is slipping. And she's coming... And, and, I mean, you can tell, like, she's just this uncaring fucking, like, sociopathic... She's got all these anger problems. And she's just sort of like this snarky bitch. You don't have any good intentions for the people. How can you claim that you're the party of good intentions for the American people when you deny Medicare for all, you deny universal basic income, you deny people the things that they need? I don't think you can. And and that's the problem with the Democratic Party is that they want to claim moral high ground and they don't really have a way to do that. They're on they're on equal shit moral grounds with the Republican Party. So That's what that's that's why they're so desperate and and again, like I said, the mask is slipping. And you get to see these people for who they really are. And the question is, are you gonna continue supporting them? The people that are big fans of Nancy Pelosi can't watch that interview legitimately and say that she is she is a, a champion for the American people. Because she's not. Because really what this comes down to is vanity. She is not approving this $1.8 trillion stimulus bill that it is not perfect, it's probably shit, and it's a bunch of pittance, and it's not what, what the American people actually need, but neither is what Pelosi wants to do with tax credits and all that other bullshit. But she won't approve this small, incremental fucking stimulus because Donald Trump's name is going to be associated with it. And when people do get their stimulus, and if it's another $1,200 check and it helps them immensely as it probably will, she won't get credit for it. And that's what it's about. It's a vanity play. Which makes Nancy Pelosi no different than Donald Trump. Because she is just as vain as he is. All right, folks. We're going we're gonna to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Friday night, October... 16th, get your tickets, uh, spooky Halloween comedy show, I'm gonna tell you guys a couple of scary stories from my, from my tours, uh, details, tickets, all of that information available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com, uh, you can download my albums there, check out past videos, past podcasts, uh, and you can become a sustaining member, which is a big way that you'll be able to financially help uh, contribute to all of the things that I do. Uh, so go to krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. All right, take it easy, guys.